This is the recorded devotion for week three of the TED and Theology class. It pairs with the lecture, The Surprising Science of Happiness by Professor Dan Gilbert. If you haven't listened to it yet, please do so now. There are a lot of TED Talks about happiness. I guess it's not surprising that it's a popular subject. I chose this one because it was an interesting approach, or at least one I wasn't familiar with. Professor Gilbert's conclusion is that we have a large capacity within ourselves to create happiness in a wide variety of situations. He argues that happiness is much less dependent on situation than we might expect, and that the attitude that produces quote-unquote synthetic happiness is far more powerful than just making the best out of a bad situation. Synthetic happiness isn't simply making do, but a real and powerful emotion that is equal to so-called authentic happiness. We could talk for a long time about whether the writers of the Bible were concerned about the happiness of God's people. Perhaps they were concerned with the faithfulness of God's people, or the obedience of God's people, or God's presence with God's people, or the liberation of God's people. Probably not happiness, though. Not that happiness is bad or unbecoming for Christians, but I think it's easy to get confused about how it might fit into our expectations of a life with God. Does God want us to be happy? I'm not sure this is the right question. I do think this question is a very slippery slope into the prosperity gospel, though. For those not familiar, the prosperity gospel is grounded in the belief that if we have enough faith in God, God will bless us with financial comfort and physical well-being. This teaching is at odds with Wesleyan theology, and indeed other large swaths of Christian theology. It's pretty popular though, right? It's not uncommon to find books advising you to self-help your way to wealth and God-given happiness earned by faith. I think these books are incredibly misleading about the realities of a life of faith. More on that in a bit. We could also talk for a long time about the differences between happiness and joy. You probably have some ideas about that. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments on the blog. I typically think of happiness as situational, a feeling of pleasure stemming from a specific moment or external cause. It comes and goes depending on what's going on around us. I've considered joy to be something deeper, more grounded in our identity in Christ, something rooted in the long game of being perfected by God's love. C.S. Lewis summed summed it up well when he mused, I wonder if all pleasures are not substitutes for joy. Pleasures are fine, but joy is better. But I think this TED Talk throws some of that into question. I think Professor Gilbert's exploration of synthetic happiness has a lot to say that is compatible with the advice we get about joy from the Bible, specifically from the book of James. The letter of James is among my favorite writings of the Bible. I tried to memorize it in high school. It seemed manageable. It wasn't. And it was full of these pithy statements that I wanted to be able to call to mind instantly. It's generally concerned about Christian ethics more than doctrine, so it can be a nice corrective to Paul's letters. Not that Paul isn't concerned with Christian practices as well, but he's so focused on orthodoxy that it can be refreshing to get some hard-hitting and practical advice from James. The short passage I'll be reading is from the very beginning of the letter. The letter isn't addressed to a specific church, but is understood to be a general letter to multiple churches, perhaps written by James, the brother of Jesus. I prefer the NIV translation of these verses. It states James 1, verses 2 through 4 in this way. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. I have two preliminary notes. First, the ideas of completing the work and becoming fully mature and complete Christians is code for becoming perfected. This comes out of Greek moral philosophy. It happens to fit well with our Wesleyan understanding of Christian perfection, which doesn't equate perfection with perfect behavior, but instead associates Christian perfection with perfect love, or a moment in which we fully embody God's love. James is saying that both joy and perseverance are both key to this process. Second, it's important to understand that it is the trials of life that are testing our faith, not God. I just want us to be clear. With these small notes, I think it's pretty straightforward. Not easy, but straightforward. How do we do this, though? How do we find joy in trials? I don't have any brilliant advice, unfortunately, 
but I do think we can learn some things about joy from this passage that are helpful in our day-to-day -day lives and also compatible with what Professor Gilbert says about happiness. Maybe happiness and joy aren't so different after all. One, joy is not situational. Joy is a choice. Joy is an attitude, maybe even an attitude of gratitude. Two, joy is based on focusing on our identity in Jesus and the process of being made more like Jesus. Not that circumstances in our life become easier by focusing on our identity in Jesus, but we change in relation to those circumstances. Three, I think that we can have joy and feel sad at the same time. I'm curious about what you think about this. From what Professor Gilbert says, it seems possible that choosing joy may also produce happiness. Instead of finding satisfaction in the circumstances of life, however, Christians find satisfaction in our identity in Jesus. I wonder if the resulting synthetic happiness is the same. It seems possible that it could be. Finally, I wanted to close by revisiting the question of whether God wants us to be happy. Remember, I said I didn't think this was the right question. God doesn't promise us happiness. God promises to make us more like Jesus. Hopefully, there will be happy moments along the way, but there will also be the struggles of helping to birth the kingdom of God. Hopefully, there will be moments of simple pleasures along the way, but there will also be the pain of journeying through suffering with God's people. May we count this work the greatest joy of our lives. Amen.